Mr. Barber, this, uh, this is a pleasure for me. I'm very excited to have the chance to, to speak with you today. Oh, great. Um, I, I guess you know, starting sort of a little bit big picture here at this stage of your career, obviously you, you've won an Oscar, you've done big franchises like Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, and you've done a lot of uh, smaller, uh, more personal roles. And I'm curious what you look for in a part that you take nowadays. Um. So I think uh, it's always the you know a, a, a good script, beautifully written, and um, and something that I haven't done before, something exciting that I think oh I could uh, I could bring something to this, and I would be challenged to, and it wouldn't be something I would just trot out. It would be take a bit of investigation, a bit of a bit of effort and a bit of excitement on my part, a bit of adrenaline um, to bring <laughs> is always helpful. You know, so I'm always looking for something new, but it's always depending, depends on a, a great script really. And then I will uh, uh, follow it up. And I, I know one of the things it's hard to talk about this movie without discussing is is roger's passing um i know he's yeah, made a number of uh, a number of wonderful films in his career including a, a handful with you and i know you've spoken warmly about your relationship with him in the past i i believe sometimes a a, a small story can help give someone perspective on a life who's who've never met who's never met someone and i was wondering if there are any little anecdotes you might be able to share about roger that would help an outsider like me to get to to know him just a little bit well it's um he was just a, he was the most wonderful director and and I, and I, you know, I would say probably my favorite director I've worked with and I only I did two the two films with him the weekend which was the uh, film yeah. about um this couple going to Paris for a weekend and then this one the duke and and he was the he was the most subtle and Easy director I've ever worked with. I mean, you never felt you were being directed for one thing, but um, but there was so much. Um, he, he was so clever, really, and so the, the, I remember the, about three weeks in, we were filming, and I it suddenly occurred to me. I thought, ah, that's. This is like an Ealing comedy, which is the, the, the Ealing comedies of the fifties and early sixties in in the UK. Um, wonderful sort of family movies with a good message, and uh, and I thought, oh, there's an Ealing quality to the Ealing comedy quality to this, and and only <laughs> later on did I realise that uh, Roger and uh, the writers had been. St- Steeping themselves in Ealing comedies for <laughs> weeks before in pre-production, and but it, that was never sort of in spelt out to me. It was, but it was, uh, it was sort of kept under. Otherwise, I'd have been playing. Oh, I'll do an Ealing comedy sort of performance. But um, there were lots of little things like in his in his direction. Like there's one scene where Kempton comes out of a out of a shop, and there's. Um, Forty people come past on bicycles, just one, you know, and it's a. Uh, you think, and uh, I never knew that was going to happen, and suddenly there they all were, and it just it con- in, um, conjured up this whole period in time, and everyone knocked off from work and went home on their bicycles. They, were, they didn't have cars, they didn't have motorbikes. They, it was basically the 1950s in Britain, and everyone went home on bikes uh, at five o'clock in the evening after. And it was and it's just an image that came through, and that was obviously in Roger's mind. I thought he had this great um, vision. It's a, a small thing that maybe most of the audience wouldn't even notice, but it's a, that, that sort of subtle attention to detail, which is really exciting. And that gives all all across the film as little things that he's brought to it. And he's a, but he, you never felt you were being directed. It was all just gently eased into it. And his casting was perfect for everyone in the whole film. And you never question any of it. It's all, everyone knew exactly why they were there and they had been perfectly cast. And they, even if they come in for one scene, they, they nail it completely. And it's just, it's a, the whole film was the most, the happiest film I've ever been on. And it was, uh, so it's even, you know, his, his death is even more painful for that. You know, that will, will, everyone who ever worked with Roger wanted to work with him again. And, and that, 
And that the fact that it can never be possible is a huge loss to many, many people. It feels like films like this, this sort of uh, positive, enjoyable experience um, used to be the norm. And now they're such a rare treat. It seems like the sort of storytelling is either shifted to television or in some cases, I guess, evaporated. And I'm, I'm curious what you make of the sort of changes in tastes and the way the industry develops projects more broadly today. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, this is one thing that is, you know, the, Obviously, drew me to the part that for um, that up front and center stage is um, a man of my age, you know, which that doesn't happen very often in in movies these days. You know, it's a it's a very much a young person's medium in terms of what you get on the screen. I mean, but there are the, the various films that. Um, uh, uh, for the older generation, I suppose, but this was this was particularly exciting. To, you know, he's a he's a hero. <laughs> he's, yeah. It's it's a very it's a very unusual. But um, um, no, it's the um, I I don't follow much of the you know the um the young action films of the of the time. I'm, I'm not. I can't. Quite keep up with, with, <laughs> with all that, so it's a uh, it's, it's I can't really talk very authoritatively, but and I do know that when this one came up, I thought, well, this is totally unusual for the time, and it's a uh, and it's a um, it's a wonderful piece of writing, really, is what it, and it because it's got wit and uh, and a ten- tension and wit and uh, humanity, everything you could want, really. I mean, the the film is very funny, but one of the things I thought was also interesting was the the portrait of male grief on screen. And it, it seems that so often you have very extreme reactions of how grief is handled. And I, I appreciated the the more subtle, long term mourning that this that your character is facing. And I'm curious how you approach that as a performer. Yeah, I mean, it it's always the approach always comes in from, from the script, and when the script is so good, it, you, you're guided through it. So you, I didn't have to do um, research, or particularly, I mean, I had to had to get the accent right. That was what uh, <laughs> from the, the north, the accent of the northeast is very particular. Uh, accent, the Geordie accent, as it's called, uh, is very particular to Britain, but uh, that, that part of Britain. Um, so I had to get that right. That was my main concern. But the, in terms of following the emotional journey, the the writers have done it so, depicted it so well and spelled it out so well. It's um, you just follow that, and it's a, uh, <clears throat> and I'm sure Roger guided me, with it, but I never knew. <laughs> What he was doing, I'm sure he, I got things that uh, were wrong. But he, and in, in the most subtle way, he would have probably just changed the direction I was pushing it. Also, I mean, uh, um, yeah, I very often bring too much to it, and then he, the, the good director, will say, "No, I like that, but bring that bit back." So <laughs> I like to present more than is necessary, and then people can uh, to sort of. <laughs> reduce it <laughs> but better that way than trying to start with nothing I, I gather we're, we're coming to the end of our time so just one final question um i i, I really appreciated the the lived-in quality of your of your marriage with helen murin on the screen i think there's that great scene where where you ask her what are you what were you doing in there and she goes i live here and it just <laughs> kind of it just kind of captures the the tensions that a, a marriage could have but the the affection that goes with it i was curious what it was like to to build out that relationship with her, the, the, that's the uh, my favourite scenes in the film are the family scenes, and particularly the ones with uh, Helen and myself. And it was, she was just wonderful, wonderful to work with. And it was the um, and it, it, everything felt so natural. We didn't have to. We didn't feel like we were acting at all. We, I think we had we approached it all in a very similar way, and the and we knew what we were dealing with, and it was. It, everything flowed so easily. I keep saying it, but it's a, uh, but it's um, it's how it was, um, and the and the whole atmosphere in the for the family scenes was is, <laughs> right. I absolutely love, and their their bickering and his uh, yeah. his um, 
sort of outright lying to her. <laughs> and it's, it's a, it, but it, there is, it's full of love, <laughs> even, though, even though there's difficulties. Yeah, well, well Mr. Robin, I, I really appreciate the chance to speak with you today. I, I, I love this film. It was really a joy for me. And I have to say, as someone with two small kids, I see your face on my TV screen nearly every day between Harry Potter and Paddington. So I, I just, right. this, is, <laughs> this has been a real, a real joy. I, I, best of luck. And thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you very much. Thank you.